Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And what I wanted to do today was I wanted to kind of do an intro or an introduction level video on solar power, especially portable solar power, as in I'm going to backpack this power with me so that I can operate away from a vehicle, away from a base camp, and keep things charged and running like my cell phone, like my GPS, like my handheld radio, like my portable radio, like my drone, like my camera equipment, anything that you can think of that you would need to keep and maintain a charge, you can use solar power so that it's renewable as long as you have sun. Now today we obviously have a fairly cloudy day, but that's where your battery bank comes in because you're not going to run your electronics from a solar panel. You're going to charge a battery with your solar panel and run your electronics off that battery, which becomes the renewable resource you're recharging that battery over and over time and again to be able to use it to run those electronic devices or charge the internal batteries of those electronic devices. In the case of like a cell phone, you would plug it into a battery. You could plug it directly into a, cell, into a solar panel of some sort, but what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a charge controller to make sure, or it has an internal charge controller to make sure it doesn't get overcharged. And that's really the key elements we need to talk about real quick is the things that you need to carry or the things that you need to understand about having solar power that's on the fly. Now, obviously you can buy those little bricks that have a solar panel on the front of them that they advertise everywhere. And it's probably gonna take you 20 hours of direct sunlight to even think about charging that brick. Once that brick is charged up, it's going to recharge some of your electronic devices several times. However, you could charge that brick just by plugging it into power as well which means you could also use it as a charging brick that you could plug into a larger solar unit, charge that brick up, and not rely on that small solar panel on the front of that device unless it was a emergency situation. However, there are lots better options out there than that that don't take up a lot of room in your pack, that have built-in charge controllers and much bigger bricks or capacity within that battery. We're gonna talk about an 18,000 milliamp battery today with a built-in large solar panel on it. And then we're gonna talk about using larger solar panels to charge that brick faster in more of a base camp scenario if you need to as well. And we've talked lots of times about the Jackery system, which I'm very fond of in my videos. And the thing about the Jackery uh, system is that it's a large unit. Even if you've got a 500, which is, you know, that's what I carry generally in the Jeep. And then I carry a 1000 in my overlanding trailer, but even a 500 Jackery is something too big to be toting around the woods while you're backpacking. So you're looking for something smaller than that in this discussion. So the three things you really need is you need a solar panel, you need a battery to be able to charge, and then you need some kind of a charge controller. And if you can get all three of those built into one item, then you really have it licked. And that's where Power Film Solar, which is a U.S. company, really has things kind of tidied up neat in a package for you that you can use mobile to run things off that battery and then recharge that battery in much faster fashion than a small solar panel would have on some kind of a brick unit. So let's think about those things. We need a solar panel, we need a battery that we're going to charge, and we need a charge controller. And now we're going to talk about a couple different options from Power Film that I want to show you. And it's not because I'm trying to push Power Film on you. I don't get paid by Power Film. I'm not getting paid to make this video. I'm not getting kickbacks from Power Film sales. I'm showing you things that I know work from a US based company. So let's kind of break this out a little bit and talk about a couple different things that I've been using from Power Film that make life really easy out on the trail and out in the woods. Stay with me, guys. All right, so you can see in the side of my radio ruck here, there's a cutout in the radio shelf here so that this device can sit right beside that. And this is a 15 liter backpack and it's not even close to the height of that 15 liter backpack. So you have a very small package here. All right, this is the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max. Powerfilm Solar Lightsaver Max, okay? Now, the beauty of this device is, A, it's an 18,000 milliamp brick. It also has a built-in charge controller so that you don't overcharge it. It has a solar panel built into it that's large enough that it will collect a lot of sunlight and charge much quicker 
than a very small solar panel on one of those portable bricks would be. This has got a 20 watt solar panel built into the system. So let's talk about that first. If we take these two ties and we just flip them over the side. We can roll this out and we have a nice big solar panel here that is attached to the brick itself. You can hang this thing up by these grommets or these tie outs. I hang it on the side of my Jeep a lot. If you get dust on it, you can just wipe it down with a damp rag, but it's built to be able to withstand outdoor use. You can put this thing out in the rain and not worry about it. And when you're done, you just roll it up on the brick itself, just like this. And then flip those ties over the top. And these are nothing but like hair ties if you had to replace them. And there you go, and that's your package, okay? Okay, on the back side of this thing, you have a USB mini input that you can charge it from. You have a 12 volt input that you can charge it from. And you have a charge indicator here that when this thing's plugged in, it will tell you what kind of battery life you have left. And then you have a button here that turns it on. So when you turn this thing around, if you just bump that button one time on the back, it's going to turn on a small LED light in here so you can see that you have power to the brick. And you also have a light here. If you hold this thing in, It'll turn that light on. It has several settings of light on it. And then you go back down to just the brick being on. And if you hold the button in again, the brick turns off. And it has these covers on it that are waterproof. The body of this is waterproof. And you have a built-in charge control in this. So you have a system here that can charge lots and lots of devices that doesn't take up a lot of room that has a built-in 20 watt solar panel that probably takes somewhere between six and eight hours if it was completely dead of full sunlight to be able to charge this completely up. The key to this is you don't need to drain it completely down. It's not a battery where you've got to drain it all the way down before you charge it back up necessarily. So you can keep this thing out in the sun even while you're using it to run a device and you're still putting some kind of a trickle charge back into this battery. So the key element to this is, number one, it has everything you need built into one unit. It has the solar panel, the brick, and the charge controller built into one thing. It will run 12 volt devices, that's very important. And it has USB outputs on it as well. So the cords that you carry with this are going to dictate what you can charge, obviously. And I carry this around in my radio ruck so that I can charge and run my ICOM 705 and it will also charge and run my handheld radios, but it can also be used to recharge a headlight, recharge my cell phone. All those types of things can be done with this in the bag. And this is something that I carry, even if it's in my day ruck, when I'm out hiking around the woods, doing a scout or something like that, on a resource walk, anything like that, I generally throw this in my backpack so that I have something with me on the fly that I can use for portable power. One thing that I carry a lot of times with this power film is I carry a 12 volt pigtail. And this plugs right into the 12 volt outlet side of the power film and has a 12 volt plug on the other end. So anything I have that is 12 volt, that has a 12 volt adapter on it can plug straight into this. Or I can plug a cigarette lighter adapter into this to give me more capability like a USB-C if I need that. Now another cable that's really handy to have around is a USB the USB mini. You can see this cable is only about two feet long. It's not a very long cable. It's not very thick. It doesn't need to be. But if you look at your electronic devices, other than probably your iPhone or something like that, 90% of them today have a USB mini as a charge port on them. My drone has it. My ICOM 705 has a USB mini. My headlight has a USB mini. My camera uh, my gopro has a usb mini so almost all of the peripheral devices that i use charge by a mini usb port so this mini usb to usb is the perfect complement for this system because i can plug it into here plug it into the device 
and I'm charging that device off this battery. And then I'm charging this battery by the solar panel, just like we talked about. So between the 12 volt plug and this USB to USB mini, and then having that USB-C outlet on the end of that 12 volt pigtail with that cigarette light adapter, I've got just about everything I would need to charge almost anything I would want to charge electronic wise that I'm going to carry by backpack. Now, remember what I said, with this unit, you have a built-in charge controller. So the solar panel is charging the battery. There's a built-in charge controller to tell it when to stop or tell it when the battery's full. This is an all-in-one inclusive unit. Now you can add to this unit for faster charging of this battery or charging of other external batteries as well if you're carrying a charge controller. But let's talk about that real quick. Okay, now let's talk about a larger portable panel, okay? You can see this panel is not much larger folded up than my Surface Pro, okay? A little bit thicker, a little bit taller, would still easily fit inside of a 15 liter backpack if there weren't a bunch of survival kit items in there like the five C's. So if I wanted to carry two backpacks or put one backpack inside of a larger backpack or just carry this and the power film, that's easy enough to do. So remember that. Now, this panel folds out to about a four foot solar panel. And we'll talk about this more. I'll show you the setup of this. But you can see it folds out this big and then it folds out two more times. We'll set this up on the ground at the hot tent so that you can see what this more what this looks like. And here's your input plug for that solar panel. So we do have to have some cables. So with that, we need to carry a bag that's got some peripheral items in it. But again, you're not talking about a lot of space in a pack for something like that if you want a lot of portable power. In a base camp, it's a no-brainer. Now, so we've got the panel itself, which again, we'll fold this out at the hot tent. And we'll look at how big this is and how it plugs in. And then we've got peripheral cables and things that go with that. Number one is we have a charge controller. So you have a battery in and a solar in, or a battery out and a solar in, excuse me, that's going to dictate the charge and be your charge controller to make sure you're not overcharging a battery. And again, this is only a necessity if you don't have a charge controller between things. The PowerFoam Solar Max has a built-in charge controller, so you don't need this if you're using this panel to charge that device. If you're charging something else that doesn't have an internal control, then you're going to need this. This is made to be mounted on something permanently, but it's a heavy duty charge controller and it's not that big to carry. Now, again, with that 12 volt pigtail, probably one of my favorite items to have with solar panels. This plugs directly into the output side, just like this, of this charge controller. And it allows you to plug anything in here that's 12 volt or again with the cigarette lighter adapter, depending on what this cigarette lighter adapter has on it, this one has two USBs. The other one has a USB and a USB-C. You can plug in peripheral devices to this. So if I wanted to say charge my laptop, which runs USB-C, I would either need a USB to USB-C or I would charge, change this out for the other one and go USB-C to USB-C. We'll talk about that more when we get in the hot tent. But this plug right here, to me is a critical part of the solar kit both directions, whether it's the larger solar panel or the PowerFoam Max or the Lightsaber Max, because this thing gives you a lot of versatility. And then the only other plug you have in here is the plug that goes, it's a 20 foot plug, I think it is, that goes from the solar panel to the charge controller so you can stretch that out. So I can lay this thing outside the hot tent, which we'll talk about in a minute, run this cable into the hot tent and run everything I want to run or charge everything I want to charge, excuse me, out of the hot tent with this setup. It's very, very simple. Now, again, you could use something like the Jackery 500 very easily in the hot tent because you're not gonna be moving around with that. But if you want an all-in-one system that you can take with you when you leave and you wanna use it while you're there in a base camp, but you want something that you could take away from that base camp and use it as well, this system works well for that. 
Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the hot tent. We're gonna set some things up in the hot tent, set the radio up, things like that, the computer. And we're gonna talk a little bit about charging capabilities within the hot tent based on this portable panel and this charge control system. And again, remember, you only need the charge controller if you don't have something built into the device that's a charge controller. So, so a good example of that would be a bioeno battery. I use a 12 volt bioeno battery sometimes with my radio equipment, especially if I'm running my 100 watt radio. And in that case, you'd want a charge controller somewhere in the mix there between that battery and that solar panel so that that solar panel doesn't overcharge that battery. That charge controller tells it when to stop putting power into the battery to charge it. In that case, you need a charge controller. So it's always good to have one of those with you so that you have the versatility to charge almost anything you want to charge. And then the cables and the different plugs, all that stuff's really important. And you think about when you're setting up your solar system, what am I going to be using this for? What devices am I going to want to charge off of the system? What device am I going to run, want to run off these batteries? And then figure out what you need from there. Most of the stuff that I use with my ICOM 705 and my ICOM 7200 run off Anderson power pole type connections so that I can piece plugs together as needed to make sure I have what I need. But if you're carrying that lightsaver max, you can just carry short plugs of different types. Like I said, USB to USB mini, USB to USB C, USB C to USB C. And you don't have to have a whole lot of cordage with you to be able to charge lots and lots of devices off of that brick. Okay, let's go to the hot tank guys. Okay, this is the folding 60 watt power foam solar panel. And I've got a cord running from that panel, it's laid out on the ground here, into the hot tent, the same hole that my Wolf River Coils antenna is coming in. Now, as we look at this, what we have is we have a charge controller here that's connected to that solar panel. Coming out to the battery, we have a 12 volt pigtail in this case. A 12 volt pigtail will charge anything that you can connect that to, obviously. You can also put a cigarette lighter adapter in there to plug USB C, USB C, mini USB C, excuse me, USB, USB mini, or USB C in there as well. And right now, what I'm doing is I'm charging the power foam. lightsaber max now this has its own solar panel this roll that's on this battery is a solar panel but it's only 20 watts but it has a brick an 18,000 milliamp brick that puts out the power that you would use to run the radio at full capacity right now if you turn the radio on let it come up for a second here you'll see that it's only running at half power no matter what I do. So that means it's only running five watts out of the 10 watts capable because it's running off the battery on the back of the radio and not an external 12 volt source. This is an external 12 volt source that will run the radio. Now you can, if you're on the fly, you got this in a backpack, you can roll this 20 watt panel out and it will charge this brick over time, but it's not the 60 watts that you have an external panel outside. And I can now plug the power foam brick into the radio to run that full 10 watts. And I'll be charging the battery as I go or charging the brick as I go instead of just draining it. So now if we plug into the 12 volt outlet on the end of the brick on the power foam lightsaber max, when we plug that into a radio to the 12 volt port. Now you can see we're running at 100% power where we can only go to 50 before. Now we can go to 100. So now we can run 10 watts of power off this radio if we see the need to do that. We can also charge this radio straight from this 12 volt by plugging a cigarette lighter adapter into that. Okay, so we've unplugged. We've got our 12 volt outlet freed up right now from our solar panel outside. You can see the charge controller blinking red back there because nothing's happening. Going green and then red. 
It's not doing anything right now. It's on standby. Now, if we take a cigarette lighter adapter like this one, and this one puts out 45 watts, which it needs to do that so that it will charge from the USB-C to this laptop, okay? If we plug this into the 12 volt, just like this, we can now go USB to USB mini over here on the side of the icon, right there. And we can charge the battery on the icon. It's not going to power the radio, but it will charge. And you'll see that as soon as I plug it in here. Okay, so now we've plugged into that cigarette lighter adapter with a USB. We've plugged in our USB mini on the back side here on the side of the icon. And now we have a charging light on our icon. Now it's not going to run the icon. As soon as we turn the icon on, that charging light's gonna go off and we're gonna be running off that battery on the back side back here. So what's happening in, is when this power is off on the radio, we are charging that rear battery. And so now if we go to quick voltage, you can see that we're at 7.4 volts. You can see that we're plugged into an external charging source. And it says that our battery is charging. All right. So we're charging that battery up off of this solar panel, but we're also using off that battery as power for the back of the radio. Now we can also plug a 12 volt charger into that same solar panel plug there that's made for this laptop. And you can see that it will charge this laptop. All right, so there's that 60 watt power foam folded up. You can see it takes up as much room as a laptop would. And it's not very thick. So it's probably, I don't know, three quarters of my thumb thick. Something like that, okay? Not very thick. And it compresses quite a bit. So that's step one if you're going to make a dedicated pack. If I took the five C type items out of this pack and made a dedicated radio pack, I could easily put this and the cables we'll need in there as well. Or I could just use this for base camp use and nothing else. Okay, so let's discuss cables for a minute. Cables are always the mess of everything. Fewer cables, the better, I always say. But the more I do, the more I see you need more cables than you really want to carry most of the time. So getting down to the nuts and bolts. These cables here are the 12 volt cables that will run from the power film 18,000 milliamp brick to the radio and will actually run the radio on 12 volts. This charges the power film from 12 volts. If you were to plug it into something like this adapter from the charge controller from the 60 watt panel. And this is just an extra that you can plug into the 12 volt outlet of the power film. So those cables and this are one set that stay in this bag all the time, separate from this other whole piece of power foam, this other 60 watt panel. These just go in this bag. Now I keep this pigtail in my bag the majority of the time because this will actually run the radio from the cigarette lighter, the 12 volts out of my Jeep. If I wanna run the radio out of my Jeep directly off the battery, get that 10 watts of power, I can use the other half of that Anderson power pole connector Plug this into the cigarette lighter and the other end into the 12 volt inlet of the radio and run it on full power. That all goes in one bag in this pack. Now there's two cables that I keep in this top flap of the pack right here with some peripheral stuff like pens and notebooks. This one is USB-C to USB mini. What that does is it uses the secondary USB port function on the radio to be able to use the GPS in the radio to sync my time for FT8. And you have to do that once every 24 hours, it takes 30 seconds and you're done. But that's the only reason you need that cable until ICOM makes that port compatible to be able to do that, which right now it won't. So you have to plug this into the USB port and then to USB-C to the surface to get them to sync. And then I have another USB-C mini here to USB, or USB mini to USB, excuse me. And that's basically just something else I can use to charge the battery with on the radio. Okay, so those cables 
the power foam, radio goes here, are what go in this radio ruck for operating the radio, basically, other than 5C type survival items that are packed below that, and some antenna cable in here, and then my antenna pouch here, okay? Now, if you're going to carry this larger piece of power foam, you would have to forego some of this stuff, most likely, because you've got a few other cables you have to carry here. We'll talk about that real quick. Okay, there's one other thing I want to show you real quick in this radio bag. And one of the things that I carry in here is I carry in my antenna portion, in my antenna bag, I carry a bag that's got different adapters and things like that in it for the radios. But it has one small banana plug adapter here so that reduces that regular 12 volt banana plug that we use on the radio to fit in not only the Baofeng batteries, but also the ICOM handheld battery. I keep that in there just in case I need to charge a handheld and I'm running this radio pack and I'm sending somebody out with a handheld and we need to charge batteries. Okay, so if you decide you were gonna carry this 60 watt power film panel with you to say another base camp or something like that, whether it was inside this backpack or whether you were carrying it separately in another bag, you're going to have to have the charge controller, which really doesn't take up a lot of room, but it is something you're gonna to have to pack. You've got the 12 volt adapter, which obviously does everything. And then you have the cable. I think it's like a 20 foot cable that goes from the actual panel to the charge controller. And then this comes out of the charge controller to the devices that you're going to charge off of this panel, okay? Uh, generally, anytime I'm carrying one of these sockets for 12 volts, I just shove an adapter in there just to have it with me because it doesn't take up much more room. This one's only two USB ports, but that's good enough for things like iPhones, cameras, drones, and all those types of batteries you may want to charge in camp while you're hanging around GPSs, things like that. Now, again, this wasn't really meant to be an all-inclusive type video on solar power. It was meant to show you an option that you can use both at a base camp or backpacking to be able to charge most of the devices that you would want to charge and carry with you so that you can be independent of the grid and plug those things in. Almost all of these devices allow you to also plug them into a 110 outlet to charge them up if you're at your house. Obviously, the Jackery is going to be something that is convenient because it has all the plugs on the front of it. It has a large battery. It has solar panels that will put, you know, up to 200 watts into that system, and it charges very quickly. But that's not real portable unless you have conveyance like a vehicle. So this is something that we're talking about that's more portable. Obviously, the smaller things get and the lower wattage your solar panels are, the longer it's going to take to charge up external batteries and things. So you have to find that happy medium. What's the happy medium? And for me, that happy medium is this power film system because it allows me to charge quicker if I need to, but also on the fly if I need to, because I can be charging while I'm walking through the woods with that power film lightsaber max, 18,000 milliamp brick plugged into whatever device is in the backpack charging it up. It can be charging my radio up or my cell phone or whatever as I'm walking through the woods. That's the key to that. So lots of people carry bricks. Why not carry a brick that's got a solar panel built into it, a charge controller built into it that will charge and, and run, that will charge that brick up itself and run just about any device that you'd want to run off of it, including 12 volt devices. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you joining me for this video today. It may get a little long and drawn out. I apologize for that, but I appreciate your views and I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.